Welcome to the League of Women Voters Candidate Forum for the Brunswick County School Board. A, a reminder that we are recording tonight's program. I'm Katherine Hedgepeth. I'm president of the Lower Cape Fear League of Women Voters. As a nonpartisan political organization, the League of Women Voters encourages informed, active involvement in government. We do not endorse candidates or support political parties. We do defend democracy by empowering voters through programs like tonight's forum and our online site for candidates information, vote411.org, where you can hear from the candidates in their own unedited voices. If you would like to be better informed on the issues, excuse me, impacting the Lower Cape Fear, I encourage you to visit our website, lwvl cf.org or our Facebook page. And we always welcome new members, both men and women. Tonight's forum is co-sponsored by the YWCA of the Lower Cape Fear and Coastal Review Online, which is published by the North Carolina Coastal Federation. I'd like to welcome Mark Hibbs, editor of Coastal Review Online, and Velva Jenkins, CEO of the YWCA, to speak about their organizations. Velva, would you start, please? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Yes. And thank you for participating um, on this night forum. I'm Velva Jenkins, and I'm the CEO of the YWCA of the Lower K Fear. It is a pleasure to be with you tonight. The mission of the YWCA is to stand uh, to eliminate racism, empower women, and to promote peace, justice, dignity, freedom for all. And we're also a organization that does not support any particular um, local um, agenda or um, support any uh, type of uh, organizations that do the same. We are here tonight to support issues. And as you're as a candidate running for the Board of Education, we wish you the best and we uh, stand with you. Thank you. Thank you, Velva. Mark. Thank you. I'm Mark Hibbs, editor of Coastal Review Online, and a helicopter's flying over at the moment. But <laughs> if you can hear me, we're pleased to be the media sponsor of the League of Women Voters forums for New Hanover and Brunswick counties. And uh, we are a nonprofit daily news service published at coastalreview.org. You can sign up to receive uh, our daily email digest free to subscribe, and uh, it covers all the latest news, coastal environmental news, science news, uh, history, and culture as it pertains to North Carolina's 20 coastal counties. Again, we're pleased to be the media sponsor for this event, and uh, best of luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. North Carolina is at a critical crossroads in supporting our public schools. Our state constitution promises a sound basic education for all children, yet districts across the state struggle to do more with less as the pandemic highlights issues of inequity. Next Thursday, September 24th, from 7 to 8.30 p.m., you are invited to join a webinar on this topic as presented in the Leandro Court case. Tonight's chat will give you information on how you can participate, and we encourage you to sign up and join that webinar. Now it is time to hear directly from our candidates. Our moderator is Barbara Burrell, Chairman of the Brunswick County Voter Services Committee. Barbara, the microphone is yours. Oh, thank you. And I want to welcome our two candidates, <coughs> excuse me, tonight for the Brunswick County Board of Education District 2. Thank you very much for being here. Like New Hanover County's three forums that were held last week, we would have liked to have held several candidate forums in Brunswick County for the various offices up for election. But because several candidates did not respond to repeated invitations the league, that the league had sent to them, and in two cases they said no, this is the only forum we will be sponsoring for the 2020 election for Brunswick County. We firmly believe that the public should have the opportunity to hear from those seeking office and our votes. 
In, pla in place of the proposed forums we cannot hold, we plan to hold virtual one-on-one -on -one conversations with the candidates who have said yes to our forums but had no opponents willing to participate. We will post those later for residents of the county to view or people more generally. We're very grateful to have two candidates tonight who are willing to engage in a full forum. They are Democrat Cheryl Jolie and Republican David Robinson. Thank you very much for coming. Each candidate will have 90 seconds, one and a half minutes to answer questions. We will start with each candidate giving an opening statement and end with a closing statement. We will rotate between candidates as to who will be first to answer a question. When you are second to respond to a question, be ready to be first for the next question. Candidates, you'll see your, our timer on your screen. I think you, you both can see the timer, is that correct? That's right. Okay, good. Um, at the end of 90 seconds, a horn will beep indicating the end of your response time. All viewers of the forum will be muted. Uh, chat will be opened and will be monitored, but no questions will be accepted from the public tonight. The forum is being uh, recorded on Zoom and on Facebook Live for future viewing. So let us begin. Uh, would each of you introduce yourself and tell us what qualities you would bring to the Brunswick County Board of, Elect of Education? My husband randomly selected Cheryl to go first. Um, okay. So Cheryl, you have 90 seconds to introduce yourself and tell us about your qualities for Board of Education. Okay. My name is Cheryl Jolly and I have been a teacher in Brunswick County for 30 years. I retired two years ago. Um, I have taught 19, I taught 19 years at West Brunswick High School and I taught 11 years at South Brunswick High School. Um, I was an English teacher. Uh, but more importantly, I am a product of North Carolina public schools. And I know that public schools are important. And as a board member and a state, I feel that it is our job to provide the best opportunity our students can have. And so that is one of the things that I really want to do. Um, I love education. I, I love to learn. I'm a lifelong learner, and that's something that I wanted to impress on my students. Um, I have a, a bachelor's degree in English from Meredith College and a master's degree in English education from UNC Pembroke. And um, I, because I never, I, I went to 12 schools in 12 years. My dad uh, moved around a lot. And so um, we, I know what it's like to be in public schools. I've had a taste of different public schools. I loved Brunswick County Schools, so that's where I decided to stay. I always welcome new members, both men and women. Tonight's forum is co-sponsored co by the YWCA. You know why we so so David could go now. Yes. Okay. First of all, thank you guys for having me tonight. I appreciate the invite, uh, League of Women Voters, YWCA, and the Coastal Review for uh, sponsoring this. Uh, I'm a native of Brunswick County. I've lived in the Holden Beach community for all my life. Um, I've been uh, also attended uh, local schools here in Brunswick County, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, and also attended our local college here, uh, Brunswick Community College. Uh, in addition to that, I've been involved with fire and emergency services for the last 30 years. I've been in and out of many people's homes. Uh, I've been, um, I've saw firsthand the issues that face our children here in Brunswick County. And I've also had a, um, a pretty good track record of, uh, um, you know, getting to know some of the Board of Education staff as well. I know Cheryl. Uh, so I'm very familiar with a lot of the folks that's involved with education in Brunswick County. Um, not only just the teacher and the administrative staff, but I uh, have a great deal of um, working relationships with our other staff, including our nutrition, our bus staff, support staff, and others. And so I've got a, a, a long history of working here in Brunswick County, spent the last 30 years, like I said, of public service, and I'm looking to take that to the next level to see what I can offer uh, as an elected official to try to make the lives of our children better here in Brunswick County. Thank you. Okay, our next question, David, you will be first. Absolutely. Okay, what do you believe are the most pressing problems for facing Brunswick County schools at this time? And as a member of the board, how would you address them? 
you know, first of all, I think going forward, our, our funding and infrastructure are big issues that's going to continue to face us. I think the COVID-19 crisis has brought us further backwards with regard to funding. So, you know, funding uh, the schools, uh, which includes the staff, and in addition to that, the infrastructure issues. I think those are going to be big issues that we're going to, have to really focus on and develop some uh, strategies in order to move forward. Um, you know, we're, like we said earlier in this forum, we're working uh, with less than we've had in the past. So we've really got to look at creative ways in bringing additional funding into the school so we can support our needs. Uh, teacher needs, uh, student needs, and uh, and of course the other multitude of needs when it comes to bus, fuel, um, materials. So there's, in my opinion at the moment, aside from the specific issues within the school system, uh, which is a separate issue I feel, but funding and infrastructure are going to be great issues uh, facing Brunswick County. And not, it's not only us, but it's going to be statewide. But being on the coast, we're in a unique position as well. And when I speak of infrastructures, we have to have, you know, more schools and we also have to have shelters in the event of storms when, when they come through. So big issues. Thank you. <laughs> Cheryl, would you like me to repeat the question? Um, yes, please. Okay. What do you believe are the most pressing problems facing Brunswick County at this time? And as a member of the board, how would you address them? One of the most pressing problems I feel now is the achievement gap um, that exists in our uh, schools. Um, we sometimes struggle to meet what the state considers proficiency in reading and math. And I think we need to expand our Smart Start programs in the elementary schools, uh, get students who are not ready to go to school, ready to go. Give them that opportunity because that leads to so many other issues. Um, students who uh, come into school behind statistically stay behind. They also statistically are more likely to drop out of school. And so to me, that is one pressing issue. Of course, funding, COVID has made this a year unlike any other. And David's right, we're gonna have to look for different opportunities. Um, we're asking teachers to do more for the same amount of money. We're asking janitors to do much more for the same amount of money. Nutrition people to do much more. And we cannot continue to demand people do more without providing them some help. Okay, thank you very much. Um, some of the questions in some ways might sort of repeat themselves. So don't, don't be afraid to say, well, I, as I said before, I already talked about if they, if they go over each other. Okay, Cheryl, um, uh, the next question. Thinking about the great impact teachers have on children's lives and success, what are your thoughts on the adequacy of teacher salaries in Brunswick County? If you believe teacher salaries in Brunswick County are not comparable with that of teachers in other North Carolina counties, what steps would you advocate the county board take to increase teacher salaries? Um, teacher salaries are not adequate. In the last five years of a teacher's salary, they will receive no raise. The most a teacher will ever make is $50,000 a year. Um, and there's no way to impact that. Um, we need to look at counties like Horry County and New Hanover where we often lose our teachers. New Hanover has a, has a payment in line that says, if you do this, you will get this much payment. If you do this, especially out of school um, things like, you know, uh, sponsoring clubs and um, things like that. Um, I think we've got to look at something like that. But the, the problem is we've got to, we've got to go to the General Assembly and we've got to petition them for mon money to run our schools. It is the Constitution of the of the North Carolina that everybody has an equal uh, education, and funding is the major part of creating that equal education. And we've got to have funding to keep good teachers, to retain good teachers. Um, our supplements are pretty. Are I have to say, Brunswick County has done a great job with its supplements. I'd like to see the 
the support staff supplement maybe go up a little bit more as well. Okay, thank you very much. David, would you like me to repeat the question? Sure. Okay, thinking about the great impact teachers have on children's lives and success, what are your thoughts on the adequacy of teacher salaries in Brunswick County? If you believe teacher salaries in Brunswick County are not comparable with that of teachers in other North Carolina counties, what steps would you advocate the county board take to increase teacher salaries? Sure. Yeah, it's, it's pretty clear that over a period of years, Brunswick County has had an inadequacy of uh, in the teacher salary area. We've lost a lot of people, especially over into Orange County from Brunswick County, uh, because they have a more attractive salary. Um, I think, you know, understanding that the state dictates a lot of things that goes on within the school system, including the funding and salaries as well. I think the school board needs to take a real close look at the current salary structure and attempt to restructure uh, it um, because I, th I think the current mechanisms in place are broken. You know, we've been fighting this battle with teacher salary over and over. <clears throat> as long as I can remember, uh, you know, it is, even as a student in school, I recall the teacher salary uh, problems that we had then. And we're no better now than we were 20 years ago when I was in school. I mean, you know, we heard the teachers talk. We knew what was going on. And teachers are in charge of a lot now. They're being mothers, they're being fathers, they're being counselors, psychologists. They're, be, they're, they're multitasking. And it's hard to ask these folks to do so much with so little. So I think the salary structure just has to be restructured altogether. It's broke and it needs to be fixed. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, so David, you go first on the next question. <clears throat> Civic education has been a topic of con conversation among legislators recently. What are your thoughts about a civic education curriculum at all grade levels in Brunswick County schools? What role should members of the Board of Education play in the school curriculum to assess and advance such civic education? Absolutely. You know, again, understanding that the state di dictates so much of what goes on inside the school system. Sometimes the school board has their hands tied on what they can and cannot do uh, with regard to educational curriculum such, such as civic education. I do promote you know, having civic education, but I think we would have to work very closely with the state and county in order to develop such a curriculum that you know we're doing the right thing. And, and in addition, is bringing parents in and having involvement as well. Uh, when we're introducing new curriculum, I think we need to have the stakeholders involved so we understand what's going to happen and not slap in something that the parents wasn't aware of or, or um, didn't have feedback on beforehand. So I support it, but at the same time, I think it's something we need to proceed with in a very cautious manner to make sure there's adequate input into the educational program before it's implemented within the school system. Okay, thank you. Cheryl, would you like me to repeat the question? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, I'm a little concerned that our legislators don't know that we already teach civics in school and it is part of the requirement for graduation. Um, every student is required to take a year of civics. Um, and during that time, people from the community who work for the government come in, they talk to them. We've often had uh, a senator or a representative, Representative Eiler or Senator Rabin come in and talk uh, in the schools and students are receiving um, the knowledge. I think sometimes our, our legislatures make decisions without discussing anything with any of the stakeholders who have to then fulfill that agenda. Um, as a school board, if the, if the um, legislature said we had to have civics at every grade level, number one, I don't know that that is uh, a wise decision since I'm not sure if a kindergartner is really ready for a civics lesson. Um, I, they do have to learn the Pledge of Allegiance. I do know that because I've heard a couple of them saying it. So I, I think it's already in place and to just put more 
on the school board without giving some funding for teachers and curriculum and books and all the things you have to have to start something. Um, I, I just think the General Assembly needs to, to ask what's being done already. Okay, thank you very much. Cheryl, are you ready for the next question? I am. Okay. What are your thoughts on the quality of education in Brunswick County for students of color and for low income students? Do you believe the school district is adequately meeting the needs of students of different racial and ethnic backgrounds and students from families at different economic levels? Please explain your answer. Okay. Um, having been in the schools, I do know that um, minority students are the, the ability to achieve is there. The process for achieving is not necessarily in place. As I said before, smart start is an important thing, especially in uh, low socioeconomic families because they don't have the resources um, to dedicate to some of the things that, that prepare students for school. Um, although I've had minority students who went to Duke, Carolina, Columbia University from Brunswick County uh, on, on scholarship, academic scholarship. So I believe our fall down, especially in the high school area, is when we fail to let those students know what is available early on. And as teachers, guide them into areas and say, don't be afraid of this. You can do it. Um, and, and, you know, you're the, you're the master of your own ship. Don't look to what other people are saying. But there are a lot of other things that affect student achievement rather than just what's going on in the schools. I think the schools are offering those opportunities. I'm not sure that everyone's aware of those opportunities or that they're ready uh, for those opportunities. Okay, thank you. David, would you like me to repeat the question? No, I believe I'm okay. Okay. And, you know, as Cheryl said, we, we've got a broad level of different socioeconomic statuses uh, with regard to the students in the school system. Uh, I believe there, as Cheryl said, there are mechanisms in place, but I'm not sure everybody is always necessarily aware of what mechanisms are in place. Um, I will say this, uh, you know, I think there are challenges uh, both with uh, um, both races, all races of school uh, children in the school system. And I think a lot of this has to do with things that's involving in the home. And, you know, I think the teachers try to do a good job of identifying every student with issues. And, and, but with the task that teachers have, they have so many tasks that they're trying to deal with you know, in identifying some of these um, students, I think it falls through the gaps. Um, I, so I do think um, students are falling through the gaps in some cases, but I believe a big reason for that is we're loading the teachers down with so much to do, it's hard for them to address each individual person as we would like it to be. Uh, it's a difficult situation, you know, um, and, you know, I wish we could say, I, I wish I had a good answer, but, you know, I don't. Okay, thank you very much. Cheryl, would you like me to repeat the question? I think I already answered it. Yep, oh. I think we're for the next one. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew I'd get mixed up. That's okay. okay. David, you ready? <laughs> All right, let's give it a shot. Okay, studies show that providing students with hands-on environmental educational opportunities help improve their knowledge of the environment. What is your evaluation of the Brunswick School curriculum regarding environmental education? And what, if anything, would you promote as a member of the Board of Education to further environmental education if needed into the curriculum at different class levels? Absolutely, I, I support environmental education. I'm not really aware that there's a, a lot of environmental education occurring within the school system at the moment, uh, at least from the knowledge I have. Um, I have been uh, more in tune on the vocational side, and that's where I've had a great concern with. But environmental education, understanding its importance and, and the 
ongoing importance that environmental education is going to play in the future. Uh, I support that uh, being offered in the school system. You know, there's a lot of things I support being offered in the school system, as all of us do. Uh, but that is one more of the more important things that, you know, I would like to see implemented. And again, we'll, we have to sit down and figure out where it can be implemented. Uh, again, every time something new comes down the chain, a new curriculum has to be, de be developed. We just have to figure out who's going to do it and when. It just has to be plugged in that big gap somewhere or plugged in the equation somewhere. So it comes back to what I said earlier. Uh, if we're going to add more things for the teachers to do or more things for them to teach, we've got to figure out, you know, how are we going to compensate them for it um, and exactly where are we going to place it and, and get it strate strategically placed where it will benefit the students in the best way possible. We just don't need to add something and not have them done our homework to figure out exactly how we're going to make it work and work properly. Okay, thank you. And Cheryl, do you want me to repeat the question? No, ma'am. I think I'm ready. Um, we do have a, a class in school that most students take for graduation called Earth and Environmental Science. Um, and some schools even have, high schools have marine biology. But what I'd like to see is maybe bring in some speakers from the fishing industry to talk about how environmental changes have impacted there, especially here on the coast. You know, we have commercial fishermen. Come in and tell us how the environmental impact has, has affected your business. Or go to the, um, the people in Bolivia, maybe take a, 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 an internship, have some internships available with companies that work with environmental concerns. Um, and I think the opportunities like that, where we bring people in who know about it, instead of having to teach a whole class, just bring somebody in from the community that they know and that, that says, look, this is how the environment impacts us. This is what we're looking for. Um, and this is what we need to do in that case. Because a lot of times we're not the people, educators are not the people who have the, the most uh, current and up-to-date information. Um, there are people who have more information, better information, and we need to bring those into the schools um, to help students understand environmental impact that has, especially here on the coast. Okay, thank you. And Cheryl, the next question. How would you rate the Brunswick County school system's response to the COVID-19 epidemic as it has affected the education of our children? What have been the positive steps the district has taken and are there any negative steps or additional actions you would advocate taking? Um, I would give this school board an A. Um, they started with at home for students, teachers in the building. For four and a half weeks, the teachers were around each other and they saw that there were no impacts, no, no breakouts within that group. Now they're bringing in the students half the students for a couple of days, the other half for a couple of days with a cleaning, deep cleaning day in between. Um, I know that caused, this has caused a lot of problems for parents who work. I understand that. But um, I know that they also are concerned about their kids and they want their kids to be safe. And I think the school board has done an excellent job. I think after the next four and a half weeks, we're only nine weeks into the school year. If we don't have any outbreaks, you know, maybe we can go back to full face-to-face. -face. But I think the steps and the increments that Brunswick County School Board has taken have shown their concern for the students and the staff, uh, and they have done the best they could given this unknown territory they're trying to chart. Okay, thank you. David? Yeah, re give me a repeat on that question. Sure. And that how would, that. How would how would you rate the, the Brunswick County school system's response to the COVID-19 epidemic as it has affected the education of our children? What have been the positive steps the district has taken and are there any negative steps or additional actions you would advocate taking? Well, first of all, uh, I agree with Cheryl in that they've, the board has done, uh, you know, as best they could 
uh, given the current set of circumstances that we've received. Um, however, I believe that had we taken a little more time over the summer months to have thought about this and uh, made better preparations for how we were going to open schools back, I think we would have been a little better prepared. Now, uh, you know, conversely, I know the state was a bit slow in getting school systems the information needed in order to make those decisions. But when the onset of COVID-19 occurred, it was safe to assume this was going to be a long-term problem. And we knew that there were going to have to be very unusual out the box strategies developed in order to get our schools back open. So I wish there would have been more time spent before we got to where we are now and thinking about these situations, thinking about the situation. Parents have been placed in difficult circumstances. And I know the school system or the school board was split uh, some time back, you know, with opening the, the school versus the online education uh, process. But, you know, I think, you know, 50-50, there could have been some things done better. And, uh, and there were things that were done okay. <laughs> I didn't hear the oh, horn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, David, ready for the next one? Absolutely. Okay. The COVID-19 pandemic raises the question of equitable internet access among Brunswick County families for long distance learning and even for communication between school and home. What are your thoughts on this issue? You know, I've got, I've talked with parents and students alike regarding this issue. And, you know, we've got folks in the county who just can't afford internet access. I mean, they're struggling as it is to pay bills. The pandemic has set folks back and it's created a, a, a bad set of circumstances for a lot of people. And then there are those that are fortunate that have internet access and, and don't really, you know, have as big an issue as others. But I think it's an obligation of the school board to work one with our local uh, co-op, Atlantic Telephone, and working with the state folks in order to develop some strategies in order to implement countywide internet access. You know, I know some cities and other locations throughout uh, the state have, you know, community internet access. And, you know, uh, I think we need to look at, you know, strategies that would help implement, you know, a program where we would have equal access to that. I, again, it comes back to cost and it comes back to spending money. But again, you know, we're going into a new era. Uh, things are going to be different and, and internet access and communications is going to be a big factor going forward. And we, we need to address this now uh, and get the stakeholders involved and determine how best we're going to make sure people have access to technology. Okay, thank you. Cheryl? Could you repeat the question, please? Sure. The COVID-19 pandemic raises the question of equitable internet access among Brunswick County families for long distance learning and even for communication between home and school. What are your thoughts on this issue? There is a problem and a lot of people don't understand that. There are, uh, more that more people than you think that don't have access to the internet. Um, there, I, I liked that the schools were providing hotspots for some people, but again, that costs money. Maybe we could work and with ATMC and get a grant um, to to give those hotspot that hotspot equipment to people um, that need it. Um, there also are people who opened up their parking lots and said, come use our Wi-Fi. Um, but that's not always um, logistical either because it takes a car to get there. Um, so it, it is one of those things where those, uh, those people who um, are low socioeconomic individuals, internet is not their first priority. And so as a school, we got to look at ways to help them get that. Um, a school system to help them get that access. And one of the best ways I think is, 
is investing in these um, small um, hotspot um, devices that they could rent, take home, whatever, and um, it would it would help them to be able to link up. Um, but again, it's going to take a grant. There is no money in the budget for that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Cheryl, for the next question, what is your assessment of how well the Brumser County School System is addressing the mental health needs of its students? Um, not an A, <laughs> not even probably a C. It's, uh, it's often that students' mental health is not addressed at all. Um, and that is a, an issue because we have lost so many of our high school students to suicides. Um, we have so many students who have anxiety and depression and um, they're trying to cope and they don't have the skills to cope. Uh, and there's no one really um, in the school designated to work with them on their mental health. Counselors are doing the best they can, but they only know what the students tell them. Um, I think one of the issues is in bullying. I think there should be a program in place that gives counseling to both the victim and the bully, because those are where a lot of issues start to arise. A lot of depression, a lot of um, inadequacy feelings, a lot of aggression, a lot of rage. It all kind of stems from those kinds of activities. So I'd like to see us pursue a program where counseling would be provided to anyone who was, or maybe even required of anyone who was in a bullying situation. I think that's where we could start with our mental health um, assessments. Okay, thank you. David, would you like me to repeat the question? Please. Okay. What is your assessment of how well the Brunswick County School System is addressing the mental health needs of its students? You know, mental health is, is such a huge issue in, in, in not only Brunswick County, but, but across our state. Uh, unfortunately, I have a unique view. Uh, I've had a unique view of the mental issues here in Brunswick County and the students. Um, having been in emergency services, I've been with some of these students. Um, I've been in their homes. I've talked with them one-on-one. -on -one. And some of these things really get to your heart when you see some of these issues that's going on. Um, the school system, it, it's difficult for the school system to adequately address this. Uh, again, it comes back to having the personnel available to deal with this, to identify these issues. Um, you know, you've got teachers now who are performing so many different duties and they're trying to identify uh, students with psychological issues and, and you know we don't have the counselors enough counselors in place and, and and you know we've got an adult mental health crisis in Brunswick County so you know students is a whole nother issue so I think if we could you know get additional staff in place uh, figure out some additional resources for these students, uh, people to talk with. I think it would be a start, but that's a big issue that's going to take a while to address. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, David, you get the next question. How would you assess the quality of pre-K education in Brunswick County? If you have any concerns, what suggestions do you have for improving pre-K education? You know, pre-K education, I, I've had, I've seen a, a lot of that um, through through my family and through friends who've entered the pre-K program. Um, it probably has room for some improvement. Uh, there are things that could be addressed. You know, this is where they start, okay? So, you know, that sets the stage for how well they're going to go into the future. So I think, you know, we need to take a look at that. Again, I, I know state dictates a lot of curriculum and, you know, so our hands are tied to a degree, but we should make sure that we have very qualified, I want qualified teachers across the board, obviously, but we just need to make sure that these, the staff that we have educating our newest 
children coming into the school system is getting the absolute best education possible. So I, I do think there's room for improvement. I'm not going to criticize what they're doing now because I've not been into the kindergarten education program as much uh, as I've had involvement into the high school and middle school educational programs. So, but seeing what I've, seeing the product that's came out of it, I think we could, we could make some improvements and try to get together with the stakeholders and make sure we're offering the best program possible. And that's also involving the parents. Okay, thank you. Uh, Cheryl, how would you assess the quality of pre-K education in Brunswick County? If you have any concerns, what suggestions do you have for improving pre-K education? Um, I think the pre-K education that's in place is adequate um, for students who are headed into schools. However, I'm not sure that it is available to everyone. Uh, I know that there are always people who are scrambling for, for a place with their kids in preschools, around the schools and, and, and in the schools. And there's just never enough places um, for children to be. Um, I would like to see the state expand the Smart Start program, the pre-K program, and put it within the schools um, and, and have pre t people who are pre-K certified people who understand the development of those particular students and understand the way they learn, to have them teaching those classes. Um, but I, I, and of course that's gonna take advocating the General Assembly to give funding for that. But I think that's a really important thing to be funded. Um, as I've said before, you know, how you start affects how you're gonna end. And if we don't provide a solid start for our students, then we're doing not only them an injustice and their families an injustice, we're doing our communities an injustice as well. And so um, I would be for advocating the General Assembly on this particular topic strongly. Okay, thank you. Uh, Cheryl, the next unit start the next question. It's our last question before our closing statements. So just want to have you keep that in mind. Okay, meeting, meeting voters as a candidate in the COVID-19 pandemic must be difficult. What are the ways in which you are attempting to communicate with voters? What are they telling you about the job the school district is doing? Um, it has been very difficult. It has been unusual. Um, I'm used to talking to people face to face and that just hasn't been happening. But I have create, I created a website I have used Facebook. I'm not really good at Twitter. Uh, I'm not as good at, at that, but I have created a Facebook account for my campaign. Um, and I try to let, post things there so people will know what's going on and, and how I feel about particular um, issues. Um, I've gone to Zoom meetings with individual groups and spoken to them. And as far as how they think the school board or the school in, uh, system is doing in Brunswick County, the complaints I've heard are specific cases, um, specific individual cases a lot of times, but people want you to hear that. And I sometimes think they don't think the school board is listening to them, uh, that they don't want to hear what they say. And so as a, as a candidate, that makes me know that communication is a, is a problem and that we have got to let people know whether we do what they want us to do or not, whether we can go with what they say, we've still got to listen to them. They've got to feel like they are listened to. And I think that is the one thing that I hear more and more from people is they don't want to know what we have to say or they don't even ask, you know, they don't even bother to ask us. Um, or we had to take this survey, but we never found out what the survey was about. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, David, would you like me to repeat the question? Yeah, sure, that would be great. Okay. Meeting voters as a candidate in the COVID-19 pandemic must be difficult. What are the ways in which you are attempting to communicate with voters? What are they telling you about the job the school district is doing? Definitely, we're in difficult times when it comes down to running a campaign. Um, you know, one of my biggest um, 
things has been social media. I have done a lot of communicating on social media, uh, particularly Facebook. That has been one of my primary means of communicating, but I also understand that not everyone has the access to that. So I've tried to get out and speak to a lot of families face to face, even under difficult circumstances, having to wear a mask and so forth. Uh, I've had a lot of people also reach out to me by phone. I have tried to make my accessibility broad. Uh, I publicize my phone number. Um, folks know where I live. Um, again, I'm available by social media, email, and so forth. And, and just out in the community. I even engage in conversations in the grocery store. Uh, that's been my biggest thing. Uh, communications, communications. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the parents I've talked with, again, has felt that they've not been listened to by the current school board. And um, I think that's just going to be one of the big things that we need to change, uh, uh, whomever is elected to the school board. We've got to improve our means of communication with the public, with the, with the caregivers, parents, and so forth. That'll be one of the big issues that we need to fix, communications. Okay, thank you. Okay, those are all of our main questions. We will now give you 90 seconds each to give a closing statement, starting with David. You know, I'm just grateful for the opportunity to have the ability to run for Board of Education. Brunswick County has given me so many different opportunities. I've been through, uh, like I said, kindergarten all the way through the Brunswick Community College. And, um, and I've spent 30 years helping people in Brunswick County. I've seen uh, a lot of the issues that the community faces. I've seen the issues that our children faces and parents. And I also acknowledge that, you know, there are more people taking care of these children than parents. We've got grandparents out there. We've got other caregivers taking care of these folks. But again, I, I just appreciate the opportunities that I've received in Brunswick County. And I want to be able to take that to the next level and continue to help the people here in Brunswick County through working on the school board and, and again, communicating and doing everything that we can do to improve the quality of education here in Brunswick County. And I wanna do that through accessibility and communications. And also, uh, again, I wanna thank this group for um, having the, this Zoom meeting tonight. I thank my, um, uh, Cheryl uh, Jolly as well for coming and communicating. I think both of us have some very good ideas and uh, whomever's elected me or her, I hope that we can even work together in getting some of our ideas implemented within the school. Okay, thank you. Cheryl, your final statement? Yes, I would like to thank the League of Women Voters for sponsoring this um, forum along with uh, the YWCA and the online forum. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to have this forum. Um, I love Brunswick County Schools. They took, they took a chance on a rookie who knew nothing. And they gave me the opportunity to develop into a mature professional. And I will always appreciate that. Um, I love the students in Brunswick County. They have made my 30 years of teaching a joy and a privilege. And I love the families that those kids came from. And I know what it takes for some of those families just to make it through the day. And um, I wanna be a part of making Brunswick School County Schools the best they can possibly be. And yes, I think David and I both are looking for the same kind of things. Um, we, we want to broaden communication. We want people to feel like we're listening to them. We want students to have opportunities um, that, are, that are available to other people in other counties. And so, yes, I hope that e whoever wins, that they will, uh, and I certainly will, contact the other person and work with them on their ideas, because there have been some good ideas coming out of, uh, out of David's campaign, and I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thank you both very much. Uh, on the behalf of the League of Women Voters of the Lower Cape Fear, the YWCA of the Lower Cape Fear, and the Coastal Review Online, I thank both of you, both of you candidates, for your participation tonight and our co-sponsors. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Our forums will be posted on our website for future viewing, so you can tell everybody to go there and watch you again. Uh, be sure to, and to the general public, be sure to plan your vote. You can check out the League of Women Voters on the Lower Cape Fear website to find the early voting site information and times in Brunswick County. You can check out our vote411.org and both of these candidates have wonderful responses to our questions. We appreciate that for more candidate information. Um, if you plan to vote absentee, please carefully read the instructions for completing it and having it signed. We're finding that that some, seems to be somewhat of a problem. So you can always tell people you're talking to if they're doing absentee to make sure they and whoever their uh, partner is who's signing for them knows exactly how to sign it and complete all the information. So thank you very much for participating and good night to both of you.